We need to talk about the copy instruction and mainly the differences between the copy instruction in Studio 5000 and the copy instruction in Connected Components Workbench. Now, I'm not here to argue about which one's right and which one's wrong, but we need to understand that the copy functions quite a bit differently between them. In our previous video, we were working through some Modbus messaging instructions and reading data from another Micro 800 PLC. And in this case, it is going into our read conveyor address, which is the local address here. Now, if we double click on this and we open it up, we see that the data type here is a word. Now, a word is 16 bits. If we go back to our original program, we were using the inputs from main PLC for our Modbus register. And if we go and we look at it, it is a double integer. So that's 32 bits or two words. So we have 10 here. And ultimately that over here is getting split into 20 elements here. Now in the PLC that I'm reading from on my inputs, number two, I put in a value of 32,567,757. Now that seems like an insanely weird number, but the reason I did that is if we look at it in binary, that gives me a one and then a zero two ones, two zeros, three ones, three zeros, four ones, four zeros, five ones, and then the rest zeros. Just so we could see a repeating pattern going across. So this is the number in our first PLC. Now if we right click our read conveyor address and we go to monitor and open it up, it is getting split into 61901 and 496 because these are both 16 bits or one word each and we're dealing with a double integer or 32. If we put that into our spreadsheet, there is the 60901 and there is the 496. So our first 16 numbers here match the first numbers here. And the second numbers match the last part of that. I just kind of try to lay them out into letters that way we can follow along. This is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H, which is what I have here. When we do that, the we'll call it the lower word number has the A, B, C, and D in it. And the higher one has the E, F, H, and G. Now, from here in Studio 5000, all we simply do is take read conveyor address, and we would put element zero in, and conveyor inputs, and then a length of 10, and that would combine them all together. But when we do the copy instruction over here, which is what we did in the previous video, then I put that into our conveyor read swap. And so we're going to right click it, go to variable monitoring, and we end up with this number, which is a negative number compared to our nice positive number. So when you type this number in, what's happened is it swapped them and the 16 bytes. So this now is the first 16, and this was the last 16. So as we started out A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, now we are E, F, G, H, A, B, C, D. And the next thing that we think we want to do is we think we want to go here and we want to swap this. So I'm just going to right click, and I'm going to toggle that. And then we'll right click and we'll monitor it again. And we end up with another crazy negative number. It is a different crazy negative number, but it is still a negative number. And that is this one right here. You have to really think through it to understand what's going on is this is not swapping like the upper word for their lower word. This is reversing them in 8-bit chunks. So we were 000111. That is now at the end here, 000111. Our next 8-bit is one and seven zeros. 
There's your one and seven zeros. Your next is the one zero one one zero zero one. And there it is right there. So this actually reverses them on a bit level. All right, I know that was a lot of ones and zeros and you really just wanna know how to get your data right, but I want us to kind of understand why what we're trying to do is not working and then look at two solutions to fix it. If you only have one that you will need to do, then this is how to do it. And I do have to thank Rockwell Tech Support for helping me, one, understand this problem and come up with this, is what they are doing is they're taking my int one and putting it in zero, and then my int zero and putting it in one. So they are swapping those 16 bits manually and then doing the copy instruction. And that does combine them. And I've shared that with quite a few of you and you absolutely reamed me for this solution. But it, it does work if we need one, but you're right. We are usually copying a block of data from one place to another. So we do need something that can kind of run through and repeat this. And I thought this is a good example of where we could use structured text and a for loop to work through this. So let's go ahead and disconnect from our PLC. And we are going to do this in structured text. So let's right click programs, add structured text, and we'll open it up. So we're gonna start with a for statement and I am gonna use a variable called index and let's go ahead and right click index variable and let's make this a double integer and then we are gonna put index colon equals zero because that's the first value I wanna copy and I'm only going to do the 10 because that'll give us enough to understand what's going on. By one do. So this is a for do statement. And so index is how I'm going to keep track of where I'm at and what I'm getting ready to do. And then we're going to go from the value of zero to a value of 10. Oops, I'm sorry. A value of nine because zero to nine would be 10 elements. And just so we understand where I'm getting the 10 elements from, it is from right here. Our PLC inputs main that we're reading, they are a double integer with a size of 10, zero to nine. And then we can actually go by twos, tens or whatever, but we're gonna do by one. So it's gonna go make index zero, do whatever's here. It's gonna get a one, do whatever's here. And then it's just gonna continue on through there. Whatever I put in the middle here is what it's actually gonna repeat. And for this one, I am gonna take my conveyor inputs. This is a, a array I've already created. In fact, let's just go variable selector so we can look at it. And it is a double integer size nine, exactly the same as our read conversion swap. So we're just making another copy of this data where we can manipulate it. And so read conveyor inputs, and then we're gonna do it, actually before we even do the open bracket, let's go find, we're gonna get a tag, dot zero. Now going back to our painful one and zero spreadsheet, the issue we really have is this one right here, which is in the zero position, currently is in the 16 position. So we need to swap all this back around. So all I'm gonna do is put colon equals, and we're gonna get the conveyor read swap, bracket zero, bracket dot 16. So this is what we really wanna do. And now we wanna do it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 15 over here. And we wanna go the numbers up through here so we can swap them around. And then we wanna do that 10 times because we need element zero through nine. And so this is where we can actually use that index. Instead of putting a zero there, we're gonna put index there and we're gonna put index here. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to do index zero through 15 going to 16 through 31. That's gonna get our first part. Okay, now we need to do the opposite. We need to take 16 and put it in zero. So let's go ahead and enter on this and we are just gonna copy this previous line 
and we'll paste it here. And we do want to continue up on this side. So 16, we're going to take bit zero and put there. And now we're going to continue this pattern up to 15. And that's going to get us all the way through, putting all of 16 through 31 in 0 through 15, 0 through 15, and 16 through 31. It's going to repeat this 10 times, giving us all our data in the correct place. So let's go ahead and download this. And if you need any help downloading your program or you're even not even sure where in the world those message instructions came from, hit that subscribe button and check out the lessons. We have lessons on all of this for Connected Components Workbench and even more lessons in Studio 5000. Okay, so now let's, let's use the spy list to look at both of these at the same time. So I'm going to add our conveyor read swap. We need element number two though. So let's go actually to our global variables. And we want conveyor read swap element number two, because that has the number in it. Right click it, add to spy list. And then let's grab a conveyor inputs element number two and add it to spy list. And so now we are bringing that negative number in that we saw right here. And by swapping these, we end up back at our original number here. Okay, I started to take and package this into a user-defined function block, and really that is what needs done next. So if you're really eager, go ahead and package that in and call it something like Connected Components Workbench Swap. That's what we really need. We need a swap byte instruction like we have in Studio 5000. And go ahead and submit that to Rockwell's sample code. I bet you it'll be popular. All right, that is the last step that we needed to integrate our FASTO didactic mech lab. And so click here for a few final instructions and let's see what you can do.